Ray didn't expect to stumble into a scientific debate when he sat down to check the newest Hubble images of Comet 3i Atlas. He was simply excited to see clear skies again after days of clouds blocking his telescope. For weeks, he had been capturing stunning views of the comet from his own backyard, tracking its strange evolution as it brightened, twisted, and shed jets into the solar wind. But when NASA released their December 4th Hubble photo, he immediately noticed something that didn't match anything he'd recorded before. The central core of the comet, which had always appeared as a large glowing region with internal structure, had suddenly become a tiny hyper-compressed point of light. The coma around it was a perfect blue halo. The entire thing looked cleaned, simplified, and flattened, as if every complex feature he had been watching with his own eyes had been erased. He kept staring at the image, zooming in and out, wondering how a comet he had photographed dozens of times suddenly turned into a star-like pixel. Even NASA's earlier Hubble OBS from November showed Atlas as a bright, extended core with a defined shape and hints of texture. Yet now, the new release showed it as nothing more than a mathematical point surrounded by a soft glow. Something wasn't consistent. Either the comet magically transformed overnight, or the processing techniques had changed drastically. So Ray did what any curious observer would do. He went to the Hubble database himself. Hubble makes its raw exposures publicly available, but only a small percentage of people ever bother downloading them because the images come unprocessed, black and white, unaligned, full of cosmic ray hits. No color, no sharpening, nothing. He filtered by observation date, found the exact December 4th files NASA used for the press release, and downloaded all four exposures. Each one was around 272 seconds long, four and a half minutes per frame. That number alone made him pause. Earlier, Hubble observations of 3i Atlas had been around 40 seconds, with a comet this bright, long exposure's risk, washing out the fine structure. But he kept going. The moment he opened the raw FITS files, he froze. The images looked absolutely nothing like NASA's official release. Instead of a sharp pinpoint nucleus, the raw frame showed a huge, saturated core. A bright, extended structure that filled dozens of pixels. There was no clean, star-like source anywhere. The nucleus was broad and complex. The back of the comet showed faint streaks that hinted at jets or structural features. The coma had gradients, asymmetry, unevenness. In other words, the raw files looked far more like the comet Ray had been capturing from his backyard for weeks than the pristine, simplified dot NASA had released to the world. At that moment, he realized something important. NASA's image wasn't wrong. It was interpreted. It was the result of processing choices. Choices designed to model the nucleus of a typical comet, not necessarily reflect the actual visible structure captured by the telescope. Ray spent hours processing the raw Hubble exposures using software astrophotographers rely on every day. He calibrated the frames, colorized them, stretched the contrast, removed the cosmic ray streaks when needed, aligned the stars, and tried to replicate the official look. No matter what he did, he could not collapse the bright core into a tiny point. The geometry remained extended. The structure remained visible. The raw data simply didn't support the pinpoint nucleus shown in NASA's final image. That's when he began reading about the method NASA probably used. Point Spread Function Modeling, SF. SF is a mathematical technique used to determine the true shape and position of a light source by compensating for optical blurring. It's often used for stars, quasars, distant, faint objects that appear only as point sources. When applied to a saturated or extended object like a bright comet nucleus, SF can behave differently. It can compress structure into a point. It can force complex features into a shape that matches the model, rather than the raw observation. Ray wasn't accusing NASA of hiding anything. He was doing something far more important. He was showing that two different approaches to the same data set could produce two fundamentally different interpretations of the comet's appearance. NASA's output looked mathematically clean, Ray's processing looked visually honest, and the raw frames, those told their own story, one that didn't neatly match NASA's assumptions. From that point on, he started comparing everything side by side. First, he placed NASA's press release image on one side of the screen. Then he placed the raw, processed Hubble frames he'd created on the other. 
And then he added his own backyard telescope images, the ones taken with exposure times between 40 and 60 seconds. To his surprise, the backyard data lined up far more closely with the raw Hubble data than NASA's release did. The cone-shaped forward structure, the elongated tail, the strange swirling patterns behind the nucleus, all appeared in both Hubble's raw exposures and Ray's personal images. But in NASA's public version, all of this was gone. Every detail, except the mathematically deduced point of light, had vanished. Ray knew why this mattered. 3i Atlas has been acting like no comet we've seen before. It brightened early, changed structure rapidly, displayed unusual jets, and showed complex internal motion. These are not things you want removed by smoothing or modeling. If a comet is behaving strangely, the visible structure is the science. Erasing it by algorithm risks losing the entire story of what the object is doing. He even pointed out the exposure issue. Hubble's December 4th exposures were simply too long. When an object is bright and active, short exposures reveal more detail. Long exposures saturate the core turning it into a white blob that processing algorithms then struggle to interpret. Had Hubble taken 20-second or 40-second exposures, Ray believes we would have captured rotation, jet activity, maybe even internal structural changes. Instead, the long exposures created an overbrightened image that SF modeling later forced into a tiny theoretical core. While NASA was focusing on mathematical precision, Ray was focusing on observable reality. His backyard telescope, limited as it may be, was showing a living, breathing object full of motion and shape. His time-lapse videos captured jets twisting backward into the solar wind. His shorter exposures maintained the fine structure that Hubble's long exposures washed out. This led him to a question far bigger than the comet itself. Are we seeing the universe as it is, or as our processing tools expect it to look? In fields like astronomy, interpretation is everything. Telescopes don't send back pretty images. They send back streams of raw photons, noise, streaks, distortions, cosmic ray hits. Then humans decide what to keep, what to smooth, what to sharpen, and what to classify as artifact. When dealing with everyday comets, there's nothing wrong with that. But when an object arrives from another star and behaves unlike anything in our catalog, those standard assumptions may become blindfolds. Ray continued studying the data and realized another issue. The NASA release lacked the back structure. In the Hubble raw frames and Ray's ground images, the tail wasn't a simple fade of dust into background darkness. It had layers, jets, spirals, and movement. Yet in NASA's final image, the entire back region looked empty. He zoomed in again and again at both versions. In his own images and in the unprocessed Hubble frames, he could see faint curves jets bending backward. He could see a textured fan-like shape expanding away from the nucleus. He could even see thinner filaments, like spiral arms rotating around the core. But NASA's release showed none of it. This wasn't because NASA deleted data. It was because their approach prioritized nucleus modeling over coma structure. They weren't trying to hide anything. They were trying to do orbital science. But the consequence is a real loss of detail especially for an object this unusual. He ran another test. He took the official NASA image and zoomed as far as possible into the nucleus. The core looked smaller and sharper than in any of the raw exposures. Then he did the same zoom on the raw frames and on his backyard data. The raw Hubble frames were saturated. The nucleus was large and bright. The ground-based images were not saturated. The nucleus showed real texture. The official release showed a tiny, mathematically reconstructed point. The conclusion was becoming undeniable. NASA's image was not a reflection of what the telescope saw. It was a reflection of how the telescope's data was interpreted. Ray processed each of the raw frames one by one. He colorized them, balanced them, and did the same stretch transformations NASA applies. He even repeated his process multiple times just to confirm he wasn't making mistakes. The result was always the same. His processed images never resembled NASA's. They always resembled each other, and they always resembled his own backyard captures. Meanwhile, NASA's release continued to stand alone. He made another realization. The hexagonal pattern that caused so much buzz online wasn't related to the comet at all. It was simply a normal artifact from Hubble's optics, but that wasn't important. What mattered was how differently the nucleus appeared in the two versions. The hexagon wasn't the mystery. The missing structure was, as Ray continued speaking in his video, he pointed out something the astronomical community 
rarely talks about. Hubble is an incredible machine, but it is not perfect. Long exposures saturate easily. Cosmic ray hits are constant. The software used by institutional teams assumes certain things about how a comet behaves, how bright nuclei spread light, how dust structures behave in the coma. For most comets, these assumptions work fine. But 3i Atlas has not been following the usual rulebook. When an object breaks the pattern, processing pipelines should adapt, but they often don't. They produce the same kind of image they always produce because that is what the workflow demands. Clean nucleus, even coma, simplified structure. But nature doesn't care about workflow. Ray's time lapses continue to show swirling, spinning jets, features bending and curving, segments of the tail brightening and dimming, the entire coma rotating in a way that isn't typical. Other amateur astronomers around the world were seeing similar things. The comet wasn't smooth, it wasn't stable, it wasn't symmetrical, and that's exactly what makes it scientifically important. If the rotating jets are real, they tell us something about the comet's internal structure. If the cone-like forward shape is real, it suggests directional outgassing, maybe even fragmentation or asymmetric sublimation. If the swirling structures are real, they could reflect magnetic interactions or plasma dynamics not yet modeled. But if these features are removed by an algorithm assuming a point source, then the official scientific narrative becomes incomplete. Ray stepped back and looked at everything laid out in front of him. The NASA release, the raw Hubble exposures, his backyard data, the earlier Hubble images from November, and the patterns independent observers reported around the world. A new picture of 3i Atlas emerged, one that looked nothing like the cleaned up version NASA published. In Ray's version of reality, the comet is not a simple dot with a halo. It's a complex, active, extended object with structure bursting in every direction. It has rotation, it has jets, it has shape. And here's the most important part. Ray never claims NASA is hiding anything. He never claims the object is artificial. He never claims deception. He simply points out that different processing methods produce radically different results. And in science, that matters. When one method consistently removes structure, and another consistently reveals it. The question becomes, which one reflects the physical truth? Ray ends his demonstration by encouraging people to subscribe, not for clicks, but because he wants people to see the comet with their own eyes, through his lens, without institutional filters. He wants transparency. He wants comparison. He wants people to understand that astronomy, like any scientific field, is shaped by interpretation. Independent observers like Ray serve as checks and balances for institutional science. They bring fresh eyes, fresh methods, and sometimes fresh truths. They remind us that data is not reality. Data is the starting point. Interpretation is what makes or breaks the story. In the case of 3i Atlas, the story is still unfolding. And thanks to Ray, we're seeing a version of that story that is raw, transparent and grounded in what the telescope actually captured, not just what an algorithm thought it should look like. If there is one lesson here, it's this. When an object behaves unlike anything we've seen before, don't rush to fit it into familiar molds. Let the data speak for itself. Let independent observers contribute. Let the sky tell its truth, even when that truth looks messy. Because sometimes the most important structures in the universe are the ones that get smoothed away.